Okay, this one shows a little more data on the Younger Dryas event and the fragmentary cometary impact that we had apparently across North America and the polar ice sheets. What we're looking at here is the Great Lakes that's around here and it's well known that they think that the continental ice shelf came right up to this point somewhat. This is Lake Superior and uh, we're looking at there's Thunder Bay if you will and what we're looking at is this conspicuous round lake that they have here. Now it's just slightly oblong of round and that's okay but I have talked about before how we don't find any craters that are really short of anything but round. Look at the moon and everything and it's hard to find one that's even at an angle at all but what you do find is that ones that are in Carolinas and the bay ones that are in there are shown as being elongated but then filled back in too quite a bit flattened out if you will and if we'll notice that this area here looks real smooth compared to all this other ripple land but then that looks smooth going into the lake there there's a smooth part over here if you can catch it even a little gully run right down here this is twisted a little bit because a the you know uh, images from a slight angle so if we look at a different one and of course it's right up there Nipogon is right up above us but in Lake Superior there are these huge gouge lines that are running through it and it shows a scouring type effect that wouldn't be normal for it to have and they say it has to be previous geological effect well when you look at them on this scale right here it's a large flood scale running through and etching on it now it's hundreds of feet below the water and if we look at Lake Nipogon, that's this you can see this area is all torn down leading into it interestingly though this whole area right here is all torn down and some 700 feet lower in sea level than right here and going around that corner about to about there and then it starts 500 400 3 250 it stays 250 and a few others right around here and jumps up to 350 and 250 and 350 and then 450, 50 and there we are again and it stops and there's this gap. And this looks slightly elongated, right? But we can't really get a look at the topography of the land as well with this picture for this is just superimposed satellite image, right? but there's runoffs that are all going convergent with each other here at an angle and a giant gouge that's through here let's try to look at another picture and see if we can't get a better shot of it there we go now if we look at it there's a huge area of a mountain that used to be here and that whole mountain range used to run right through here and up here like this and now it's not there anymore but there's some peaks still left in it but it seems that all of this is washed away somehow and if we look at this formation and all the streaks going here and that smoothed out area going out here a large amount of water rushed out over this area so how much air water would have to have been there? Well, this area is a few hundred feet higher than this is, which is a few hundred feet higher than the water, which is hundreds of feet deep. But regardless of that, you end up with a semi-circular form and then this broken out edge. And the reason it looks 60 miles by 40 miles is that 20 has been torn into it. And if you looked at this as being the upper edge of a ridge, and it being right here, it's a whole lot closer to being round, maybe eggish, if you will. And if you look at the topography again, so it gets up 1,500 foot 
at a maximum here and 1500 foot and then there's that 700 foot difference I'm talking about of right in here in the center part of it and sure there's a high point 754 but it's all the way down at 700 foot and it's a spillway into this which helped to gouge out Lake Superior but we can also see the perimeter on the highest points that are around this and conspicuously it puts it at a rounded form crater that looks like it came just about at this angle right here and if we look at that and the shape and we look at the measurements here and how it would have dug out a little bit farther where it hits on the leading edge than it would behind it and gouge it out we can get some 11 and 12 versus 15s and say yeah there's probably been erosion and everything since then well the change and well, the strange part about it and the change we're going to have to do is realize that this isn't a crater that hit in the desert of the Arizonas and left you a perfect hollow type that still looks the same today. This thing hit into a continental ice shelf that was a couple of thousand foot thick. And so it, and it's looked at as being that they, they vaporized. This looks like it may not have been one that even vaporized it, or if it did, it would have been at impact or right at impact or so on. And there's a couple of anomalies right around it that would have said maybe some fragmentation happened off of it as it released. And in fact, in a cluster of them, it looks like there's three, four, maybe even five other impacts that are around and correlate somewhat to the possibility of being connected with each other. Now, people don't look at this. This is something like Yellowstone National Park where if you're in Yellowstone National Park, you don't realize you're in a caldera that's as big as this thing is, or bigger even, and that it is, and you're in a depression in a giant volcano caldera. It's not up and then you're in a volcano or anything like Moana or anything. It's a ground level volcano and the ground level is depressed down that's inside of it. And that's why they have all the hot springs and everything else there. You probably don't even realize that you would be in it. Let's try to get that other picture again that I wanted. Well, here's a good picture of the land that's leading out away from it into Lake Superior. And every place you can see there's that giant gouge and then you run through and run through and run through and run through. And, and what this is, is this is these giant river valleys that look kind of like uh, the Grand Canyon. There's a big old gouge through there, and there's a little bitty river. And if it was a little bitty gouge run real deep, then you might be able to have the belief that this river slowly over time cut this gouge. But just like the Grand Canyon, there's a little bitty river at the bottom of it, and it's wide as hell at the top. But it's somewhat uniform going down, and then it tapers real quick. And so it lets you know at one time, a whole lot of water was running through this little area, but now it's slowed down. Now, scientists wanted to say, well, this happened over thousands and thousands of years. It really wasn't a big, you know, giant flood. It really wasn't things that now that they've had to agree that it even happened. Strangely, it points towards something different. And if they'll just put one and one together and make two of it, look over here and take one and one and make two of it, and then say two and two is four, then you'll have something. For all the megafauna died out of the North American continent about the same time, and we know that there were people here too that apparently all but disappeared out of North America, especially at this same time. And all that was left was little critters, and there used to be camels here, and there used to be lions here, and there used to be horses here, and there used to be giant saber-toothed tigers and cave bears oh my and huge herds of bison and mammoths and it's all gone and the last remnant of it was over on the other side at siberia but when we find them they seem to have been hit by a catastrophe so rapidly they still have food in their mouth boom it just knocked them over and they flash froze
it's freaky looking whenever you see it and then what they say well this is the way he laid and he laid down and he didn't get thaw and all this other stuff happened no he just kind of bent over and died and froze solid and he's been froze solid since that moment in the permafrost and you put just a couple of things together and by this gouging I'm talking about so there's a river that runs through it but then there's this shelf here which let's just make some common sense here a lot of this rubble here is from this falling off and breaking off and it's so it's made this a little bit but by the same contrast we can say this lake used to be way up here in fact nay it used to be at the very top of this level at one time etching through this area worse than that we can say it was over this whole area just a little bit and as it cut through then the water started taking that channel and speeding up as it goes down and taking that channel and in doing so it etched and carved back this thing and much like my lake Niagara Falls is slowly etching its way back if you're familiar with the way that calving process is you know just like on glaciers and it is tearing back the the place as it goes for it used to be way downstream and they tell you, you know and then it's slowly torn its way here well this didn't happen slow at all this is at a single event and this didn't happen over a thousand years and it doesn't even look like it totally took a thousand days but even less time than that for the whole effect surely lasted longer than that and and the rebound of such took thousands of years and uh, it's one of the reason that the whole world's in a fog and understand that if this happens over here a butterfly bats his wings in India and lo and behold it rains in Texas right so volcanoes happened at certain times and it's caused extreme weather around let's put another two and two together if we can and set this on a shelf we went through a little mini ice age and Waterloo and all that stuff and uh, the winters that even George Washington went to they talk about that in this series there and that whole epic of time was way deeper winters and a problem and long-lasting winters and stuff off of it well we figured out now but we didn't know it then that the glaciers that we were looking at had recently grown a hell of a lot and now in looking back as they're receding back to the point that they were ever before in places and other places it's still out even more than it was around about 10,000 years ago or 8,000 years ago they were even smaller than they are now less than they are now and the ocean used to be almost an inch tall yeah but during that little mini ice age, the ocean dropped almost an inch and a half, two inches. But you don't really notice it. You wouldn't notice it if you had a pole in the water like your pier and the water lines onto it necessarily, especially with the way waves work. Just inches. But it's interesting to note that when they're all talking about global warming and freaking out and why I agree we're putting pollution and gases into the atmosphere and everything else, but their play on this and their ploy towards humanity is incorrect entirely for we're doing another ice age here real quick and everybody's talking about oh no you know my porridge is too hot and you better watch out because real quickly it becomes porridge too cold if you look at these things like the under, younger trius event look up pictures that they show you of the heartbeat of the way that the ice ages ran in their lengths of time we're kind of overdue one and hey, there's spikes before we were even really on the planet in the last ice age doing anything of value. And they were already worse than now. If you put that line up there, boy, you'll go, what happened? Well, some of those were volcanic events and things causing the worst ever. And so it's been worse than this, no matter what we've put in. So it shows you there's been some catastrophic events too, because we know we've put a whole lot of smog and we're doing all these things. We're like, no, no, something like Krakatoa or these larger volcanoes kind of make make that extremely look like oh you're just smoking a cigarette your house isn't on fire you know it gets exaggerated to a point of it I saw a video recently where they talk about volcanoes and the magnitudes of each and how it gets up and how much stuff they put in the atmosphere and cause problems and now with the new results they have towards that matter they can see how temperatures have floated 
and they've correlated it with ice ice shelves now and they're like okay well it must have done it once a long time ago too but nobody really knew because nobody was living near Krakatoa right and so it, it kind of shows something very telling uh, so what we were talking about is some of these creeks that are run right through here the water was a little running over the top of this thing when it first let loose and then it finds a crack or a fissure but it exaggerates that fissure and it's running all those giant boulders through there just cracking in the walls up and doing everything and it gouges then all the water on top is able to fall through and be in that trench and whenever it's in that trench it's now rushing and more per square inch of boom and it just starts ripping through there but then as it does it gouges down 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 and then slows down and how long does that take that doesn't take too long amazingly it doesn't take too long at all so you can see here where he's showing that actually that ridging is about out to this range and it's much bigger than this and I've recently shown a video where they just found a brand new well it ain't brand new but they just they never knew it was there in Hiawatha uh, Glacier in Iceland Greenland I keep doing that or is it Iceland <laughs> yeah and uh, and it's like 31 kilometers across something like that it's pretty big but say well this one is two and a half times that big yeah and it did much more damage when it was doing its damage but we can expect that we're not going to see a normal crater or a normal crater effect like we have seen on any planet like Mars or the moon or even the earth ones that we know about for it landed there and there was an ice shelf there but it vaporized an, an area much bigger than the outer yellow circle at one time when it went boom it took all of that water and at least one third of it got vaporized into vapor instantly and turned into a huge cloud bank that swell over around the world and went up into out of our atmosphere but at the same time all that water had to go somewhere and so it starts trenching back on the spot where the explosion is where my pointer is and in doing so it rushes the water through there and so usually on these impacts we're able to find these micro crystals micro diamonds and stuff quartz fra fracture things with linear stuff in it which I've shown you and stuff they're not going to see that here probably as much first of all the field is too big so it's not like pow and it's all right here but it's wham and it's gone all the way out here it, it, there has got to be more debris outside of the uh, outside yellow ring from this impact than there would be inside either of the yellow rings just from splash effect and explosion and what was verified you know vaporized but that water washing through there has just washed it away and took it out and so if you found excesses down river somehow but even down here this all got washed away this all got washed away here let me give you a picture see if this will work for you maybe we can end this after this whenever you're on a beach right at the wave line and it's coming in and touching your feet and going back out and let's pretend we have a baseball or a rock that size and it's on a string like a yo-yo but it's a baseball -y rock okay and the water comes in and it goes out and right after it goes out we throw it on the ground smack and make it a little puffed out it's a little bit you know and we yank it back up and there's our crater but now all the water around there has to do something and so oh, and it rushes through there and starts finding its easiest way out some of which is up in this area but a large portion of it is down through here and we looked at those channelings that they're talking about and he goes way deep into it whenever he shows his video uh, here and everything he gets almost a little too much with it but regardless it's he's very interesting to watch and uh, at the same time the remnants of that just got washed away and now that little crater you had right below your feet in one little wave is just a little dent with some water left in it 
right? And if we let it wash over again, which luckily we haven't had another magic flood over this whole area, if we did, it wouldn't even look like it does now. But, so we haven't had one since then, so apparently somebody stopped the ocean from reaching to your feet. So we put up a little barrier and it stops it before it gets there and we look at that. And what we have is a funny looking crater. It doesn't look right. It's a little dent there and that little dent, which doesn't look like it's a correct crater, has some water into it. Oh, it's probably just some round lake. But if you look at all the data with the raised line and the raised area around it, and they said, oh, well, there's a low area over here. You can't say it's all raised up. And they go, yeah, but isn't it funny? The ro raised area, the low area is where the watershed runs out of that. And so it might be conspicuously to see what happened. Because, again, we were at 2,000 foot of ice over this. And it got vaporized within seconds. And the ground still pulled off a crater. So no telling how big this thing was. This circle here that's yellow is a little over 60 miles. It's about 70, 75 mile radius that's there. And it could have been something that big right there. And 75 miles across is an attempt at a planet in there. And so maybe it's a little bit more of a incredible cosmic event than we're even willing to think or talk about. Whenever science goes to looking and finding craters and things like that, they wanted to find a biblical flood so bad up until just quite recently, and still do, that if it doesn't start to even come close to fitting within the timeline, they just pretty much negate it and just talk about wishy-washy and let it go instead of its correlating data. And without knowing about three or four other informations that go along with this idea, the Younger Dryas event, so-and-so, and the extinction of the megnofauna, and you start making theorem on theorem or postulate upon postulate, you fastly end up seeing that yes, something extremely drastic happened. And I've been trying to show it to you all now. It keeps getting shown to me in pieces again where people are going well here's another piece of that puzzle that you had over there and ironically it does fit and look it's yellow feathers of a bird just like you said and I go over there and snap it fits right into place and it just keeps going finishing but this is like that game on Nickelodeon or whatever whenever they start flipping over squares and after about five or six squares they poke open something and all of a sudden you go ding I know what it is it's an ostrich And after knowing so much and playing this game for a long time, I can tell that's an ostrich. Yeah, that's a duck. This is a duck. That's an ostrich. And no, I'm not an incredible geologist or anything along that line. Uh, it's just a lot of the fringe studies that I went in trying to learn about everything I could to correlate with the things that I did in deep studies because it left me lacking. And a few times I found places where something I never even thought correlated to it whatsoever showed up exactly to be true about it, like pollen counts showing up all of a sudden off for 700 years. And I go, that would correlate data and say that something big happened. Tanguska Crater went through that same situation, but for less of a time. So that must be, this must be incredibly, okay. Correlation, correlation, correlation. If you found something like continuity of pollen, continuity of sediment layers, then you'd say, well, never happened. And whenever we tried to say that the Great Lakes uh, got formed by these glaciers, they said no. And when we said that the, or we geologists and stuff, said the um, Grand Canyon was carved out by massive flood all at once and all this type of situation, they all said no. Then later they said, yeah, yeah, the Great Lakes are by by uh, glaciation and stuff and everything and they go yeah and all that glaciation melted made the great made Grand Canyon and they said no it happened too slow you can't show me where it would have happened too fast to make it to where you could have said it did this gouging way down there after feeding for all these rivers I mean it could have come up at oh you know real good but it wouldn't be anything like you're talking about 
well, now looking at this, and that was through 1800s and 1900s. Now, whenever, you know, really up until 1980s, and people started finding things, and of course, first ones dismissed and dismissed, dismissed. Here we are almost 40 years later, and people are finally going, you know, all these things correlate with each other, and that might make water happen go at a real fast time, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, here's the thing that they predicted. This one fragmentary piece of the comet hitting that piece, and if we had more at the same time other than this being a solitary strike, which it looks like it is, the others may be smaller. Oh, I don't give a damn. This one right here, alone itself, the amount of water it would have put out from its own melt itself would it be equal to all of the Great Lakes we just looked at, all of their water that's in them, more than two times over. And it all would have been leaving out of the place as fast as it could, and most of it going south, and tearing through all of North America. There's one more picture that he had. And if you look here, you see how this area is just smooth, just almost nothing? Because a glacier was slowly going over that, but it receded back and it went over it and it receded back and went over it and it just ground the little mountains that are around there into dust. This all has been etched out a little more. And even whenever you just look at this picture, knowing what we knew now and that yellow ring type effect, can you still see the yellow ring? Can you still see how a river runs? down and instead of hitting it like it should because of the raised ground around it it goes around it mm -hmm. anyhow guys like share and subscribe and enjoy and we'll get on to the next portion of this topic but here's another one of those strikes now so that's three of them and that one it's in Iceland off the Hiawatha uh, glacier and then two more possibles he also mentions in this one that's about one sixteenth this size that he feels maybe a secondary impact ha happening in tandem, uh, i.e., like a portion of it broke off. Like the baseball hit here, but a, a marble fell off of it right about here, and of course it overshot the boundary just a hair and so on. Well, it looks like it might have done that quite a bit, and this may be the major portion of the impact. But there is some buckshot shattered all the way downwind, coming at about this angle and rushing across there and going across the eastern seaboard. And it isn't just coming at this line in between here, 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 no. no from way up across over here and what would have pegged Iceland coming across. So it came across the right, the top of our ball. Spin a ball on your finger and it came right at the very top of it. Wham! Anyhow, we're going to go on to the next one, guys. But uh, just keep correlating this data and putting it together. And now he's going to go up there and get samples this next year. He was going to do it last year, but one of the lead guys died. So they uh, put everything on hold. And uh, they're going to try to go up there again with the crew this year and get samples. The problem is, is where do they get the samples from? From the edge of the rim, from the edge of the yellow rim, from the outer yellow rim, if they do these three things, they're spanning 120 miles. And so that becomes quite the endeavor. And he said four or five days and we can get some information. But if it's all been washed away from the toilet flushing, right through here, kafush, it all, all the water from this whole area right here all got melted and it all went kafush and rushed out down through here. And it kept going. Anyhow, guys, on to the next one. Peace. Comment down below.